I'm not usually one that uh, look at the news and then preach what's on the news. I'm just, that's not me. But when the news is the Bible popping out at me, I feel compelled to say somewhat about it. And I, I, I haven't brought you probably two hours of news since the election. Uh, I get tidbits on the internet news like some of you do. I just don't want to hear a lot about it, and I can't listen to these anchors. They make me mad. Amen. And I'm not, uh, I'm not watching CNN. I'm not watching uh, MSLDC, and uh, you'll get to that later. But what's been the news for the last month? Who's been in the news the last month? Somebody say it loud. Russia and China. Russia and China. Kind of ironic because both of those nations is going to play a big part in the last days. We know China is capable of right now having two, a 200 million man army. They have it right now. It doesn't have to be fulfilled. They can do it today. And of course, you do know that Russia plays a part in prophecy. Now, I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. I may not get all the way there tonight. I'm looking at the clock, and I'm deciding to go fast or slow or make this two-parter. I'm so rem remember that. And let me say this by way of introduction. Back in, when was it, Jeff, you remember, you, you got a good memory. When was it Ronald Reagan said to Gorbachev, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. Now, 86, 87, 88, somewhere. 87, thank you. Uh, I'm, I knew it was in the last couple years of his time. Now, when that happened, I want all of you to look at me. When that happened, and it did happen, many of my brethren that study the Bible, here's what happened to them. It threw them for a loop because here's what they did. They, they changed their doctrine and their teaching because they thought that Russia could never come back and cause the problem that they're going to cause in the last days. And many of my brethren changed, absolutely departed, and became in error as far as eschatology goes and as far as Russia went. But see, what they don't know is that God has his hand in all this. And we're not running by their time. We're running by God's time. Somebody help me preach. And by the way, I want to make a statement to you. Russia tonight is more lethal than they were in the days of Ronald Reagan. Hear me out. They're more lethal, more dangerous. I personally believe they're getting ready to do something terrible. Now, I want to show you a little, just two-minute clip. Do it for me real quick. A little two-minute clip, just to get your taste on this. There's alarming new evidence of Russian troops massing within striking distance of Kiev in an attack the Pentagon describes as imminent. Here in Ukraine, the uncertainty remains whether Vladimir Putin is still preparing to attack but with the glimmer of hope for diplomacy in Geneva, Russia, though, is still sending more troops to the border. And more than 100,000 Russian troops have surrounded Ukraine. Ukrainian troops are watching and waiting, saying they are preparing for a fight. This morning, Ukrainian soldiers are watching and waiting in the snowy trenches of eastern Ukraine. Just across the border, Russian forces conducting military exercises. Russia is still demanding a guarantee from the U.S. that Ukraine will never join NATO. But the U.S. again ruling out that demand. And Russia rattling its saber just before that meeting, holding a joint naval drill in the northern Indian Ocean with China and Iran. 
One of Ukraine's top commanders to the east, Lieutenant General Oleksandr Pavlyuk, says Ukraine estimates there are now 127,000 Russian troops massed near its border. And to the west, Russian fighter jets and missile systems are moving into place in Belarus for what Russia says are military exercises. New video shows invasion drills by paratroopers ahead of hastily arranged joint war games with Russian ally Belarus. Remember, you know, Russia has already invaded Ukraine. Back in 2014, the Russians invaded. They seized control of the Crimean Peninsula, uh, an act that was illegal under international uh -huh. law, certainly according to the U.S. and its allies. Uh, and then in eastern Ukraine, also since 2014, the Russians have been backing in an armed, uh, violent separatist rebellion. That's a, co a conflict that's ongoing. And right now they're just testing the limits, testing the boundaries. They see that the West is not united, the response is not strong, and this is why they go more and more further and further. Thank you. May I, now, listen carefully. What they're doing in the Ukraine at this moment, whether they invade or not, I don't know if they're gone. But see, that bear from the north is... Uh, Roaring. And their ultimate goal, ladies and gentlemen, is not the Ukraine. It's world dominance. And their ultimate goal is to destroy the children of Israel. God's people. Now, tonight I'm going to start, it looks like start, teaching tonight on Russia's role in end-time prophecy. Now, I want to make a statement to you. And I say to everyone in this room, there's not one Bible student in this room can, in the Bible, find the USA. We can guess about it. We could call the mystery ba or political Babylon, but we can't prove that. I'm not sure America will be here during the tribulation period. It's quiet in here. The, America's not mentioned here. Now, whether she is or not, she may be in a European alliance, uh, hooked in with the Antichrist. That may be a part of America because we definitely are becoming socialistic and more like Europe every day, and we may yoke up with them with the Antichrist. That may be our role. I don't know. But I tell you what, the Bible does not give us direct prophecy about the USA, but the Bible does give us direct prophecy about Russia. And here she is in the news again. Now, here's what I'll answer tonight. I'm going to answer... And when, don't get the PowerPoint yet. I, I, I'm just going to give the questions. I'm going to answer four or five things. Here's one more answer. Number one, where do we find Russia in the Bible? I'm going to do that in a moment. Who will join Russia's end time prophesied alliance? Who will do that? Then number three, why the Russian alliance cannot invade Israel today? I'll answer that. Then when the Russian lines will invade Israel, and then how will Israel survive the invasion? These are all questions I'm going to answer. And what the Russian prophecy means to us today. Now, I want you to know something. Putin is an angry heathen. Somebody help me preach. He is, he is a Russian through and through. He is a Russian of the 80s through and through. He is, a, he is another Khrushchev, another Gorbachev, but he is more lethal than both of them. Somebody help me preach. 
Now, you may well be wondering, why are you preaching this tonight? Because the news is popping right at you right now, and it's talking about Russia. And if it's talking about Russia, it's talking about that soon invasion of Israel. And ladies and gentlemen, I have a belief that the invasion will happen either right prior to the rapture or right after the rapture. And I, I can prove that tonight, and if I get time, I will prove it. Whew, good preaching. Can I have a sip of water? <laughs> Lord have mercy. 2,500 years ago. Now you can turn in your Bible to Ezekiel 38 and 39. 2,500 years ago, I'm going to answer the, the first question. Where to, to find Russia in the Bible? Ezekiel predicted specific events that will occur in Russian future, he begins uh, teaching that in Ezekiel 38 and with a long list of nations that will attack Israel. Now, there was something happening in the news today. Please, somebody tell me when I get to the alliance, don't forget what happened in the news today that was so profound that probably most of us miss. And if I get to the alliance today, please tell me, hey, preacher, make sure you say that. It happened today. It was on, I saw a Fox News clip, and I saw it. I said, whoop. I said, whoop. <laughs> hey, by the way, oh, I'm bogging down. By the way, the United States better not trust everybody in, that's in the NATO alliance. Because I will uh, tell you there's some of those that are in the NATO alliance that will be with Russia when Russia comes against Israel. And I'll prove that later on. And that's what I want you to remind me of. Whew. Now, go with me, Tim. Woo, I'm about out of breath. Go with me to Ezekiel 38. Did I tell all y'all on live stream to share this? Share this. It's going to be good. Go to Ezekiel 38. If you're there, say amen. amen. I want to show you something. The Bible said, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against them. And say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I am against thee at Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn thee back and put hooks in thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horse, horses and horsemen. And they, Now know this, Ezekiel wasn't seeing all the modern-day armor. He was putting it in his vernacular. I hope all of you understand that. All them that clothe with all sorts of armor, even a great com a company with bucklers and shields, all of them uh, handling the swords. Now notice this. I'll show you the alliance and I'll get back to this. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them. And all uh, with a shield and a helmet. Gomar and all his uh, uh, bands. And the house of Togomar and of the north quarters. And all his bands and many people with them. Now, uh, if you study the Bible, in the Word of God, the land of Magog, and Gog is the prince of Rosh, or Magog, in the Hebrew. You said, what are you talking about, Rosh? Rosh today is Russia. Those two cities, Lord God, I'm a, those two cities, Meshach, and you trace this by, and Tubal, you could go back to Genesis, and we'll do that in just a moment. And uh, uh, do you, have you started the PowerPoint? Okay, good. Uh, uh, so here's where, that, here, here's where the prophecy starts. Here's where, where Russia is mentioned, and I'll elaborate on that more in just a moment. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I can't tell you where the United States is, but I can show you where Russia is. And this alliance, by the way, if you notice, they're coming from the north. That's mentioned in Daniel. That's mentioned in the book of Ezekiel. That northern bear, 
that the scripture talks about. Guess who that is? That's Russia. I'll tell some of my naive Baptist brethren that have departed from that teaching uh, years ago because you could not uh, in your mind analyze how they tore the wall down in Berlin and now it's going to be of great power. But you don't understand God's perfect plan. They're more lethal now than they ever were. And this is happening right before our eyes. It's jumping off at us. Somebody help me preach. Now, let me, let me show you these verses up where we find Russia. Now, notice in Gomar and all his bands, the house of Tobar are of the north quarters and his bands and many people with thee. And thou shalt uh, uh, come from the place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee. Uh, there's going to be a northern invasion of Israel by Russia. What you're seeing in uh, Ukraine now is nothing compared to what's going to happen just very soon to the children of Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about ready to jump out of my seat. You are watching the last days unfold right before your very eyes. And I say to you, you might want to lift up your head for your redemption draweth nigh. Let me go on. Let me. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. Number two, let's answer the second question. This where we'll get more in detail. Who will join Russia's prophesied alliance? Now that word Meshach and we get that city from Genesis 10 to. Uh, these are children of the Noah and grandchildren of Noah. The word Meshach is the word Moscow or for Moscow. And the word Tubal is for the, uh, the city of Toblish. And these were grandsons of Noah. Ladies and gentlemen, this alliance between Moscow, Tobosh, is a real deal. And the Gog is the prince or the leader of Russia. And if it happens today or the near future, it most likely is going to be Putin. Putin fits this. Putin's ruthless. He would kill people in his own nation to get his way. And I'll be honest with you, this ain't going to go pretty with y'all. And you might want to ask, why is he raising up now? Uh, why is he raising up? Well, we know it's in God's prophecy, but I'll tell you why he's raising up. He's raising up because we got a weak, anemic president that wouldn't say boo at the devil. Biden is no match for Putin. No, Biden's no match for Xi of China. And both of them have intimidated him. Oh, don't you doubt by your head now. I'm telling the truth. Why do you think uh, uh, America's looking at our presidency and seeing a weak, anemic leader? He's losing on inflation. He's losing on, with coronavirus, but that isn't the big picture. He's losing on the world stage, and that's where it's all going to happen because Christ is getting ready to come again, and all this is a fulfillment of Scripture. You say, well, you just don't like Biden. No, no, that's not true. I just don't like weakness. It's not, you know, I, I just don't like weakness. I, I, America's always been strong. America's always led. I like leaders like Reagan was able to say to Gorbachev and stare him down. Gorbachev, tear that wall down. And he did. And whether, who am I slowing down? <laughs> whether Putin goes into Ukraine, if he does or don't, he already got his point across. He can. Somebody help me. But let's look on. Stay with me. All y'all got your Bibles? 
Let's look at this confederacy. Look, look at uh, look at the next name. Who is that next name? Somebody said in verse five. Say it loud. Who in the world's Persia? In 1935, Persia's name was changed to Iran. Ezekiel 38:5. Thirty-five times in the scripture, Persia is mentioned. Persia is Iran. Who hates this country more than anybody? Who is causing more menace and anger throughout this country or throughout the world? Iran. Somebody help me. They're going to be in this confederacy also. Along with Iran, boy, I'm telling you, I hope I'm helping you. By the way, it was Iran in 1979 that had our hostages. And by the way, they let them go when Reagan came in. See, Russia, Iran, the world, the communists, the Chinese, They will take notice of strength, but they will laugh at wimps. Boy, it's crying. <laughs> y'all helping me? All right, somebody else, y'all all with me? Thank you. Let me go on. Is it okay if I do this next week? Because I, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I, I'm not getting done. It's 8-11. And then <laughs> Ethiopia. Ethiopia was found by another of Noah's grandsons in Genesis 10, 6. Ethiopia was one of the two North African nations that would join the alliance, Ezekiel 30, 38, 5. And Ethiopia represents the land south of Egypt. Today, that region is the modern country of Sudan. So you'll know far as today. How many still with me? Say amen. Stay with me. I'm, I'm going somewhere. Then, notice the next country, Libya, occupying the land to the west of Egypt. Libya is the only nation on Ezekiel's list that still retains its ancient name today. It was founded by Put, another of Noah's grandsons, Genesis 10, 6. Today, Libya's official religion is Islam. It, it maintains strong ties with Russia and there is evidence that Libya is going to purchase military armaments from Russia and has. Now, the next one. Did I tell you all to remind me something? Did, you, did I tell you? The next one. If you go to Fox News uh, on their online uh, news, when you go home, it may still be there. There's another one called Gomar. According to Genesis 10, 2 and 3, Gomar was one of Noah's grandsons. Some scholars placed the territory in the modern Germany because of the similarity of the names, and I believe Germany will be an alliance against Israel. Now, no, if I had the uh, iPhone, I'd show you this evening. I wish I could put it up on the wall. Today, Gomar or Germany said this. They are taking a weak stance toward America and are not all in on what the NATO alliance wants to do to Russia. You said, well, aren't they all in? Because, ladies and gentlemen, they will be an ally. They were an ally of, of the Soviet Union and will be an ally, ally of Russia again when Russia comes down. Somebody help me preach. Y'all y'all still with me? Oh, it's 814. Can I give you this last one? Would it be all right if I come back and rehearse this next time? Because I, I Togomar. Moving down Noah's family tree, Togomar was one of his great grandsons, Genesis 10:3. Ezekiel places the tribe in the far north. 
Some believe Tomar could be the foundation of modern-day Turkey. Now, we saw what Turkey done just a few years against the United States. And the war that they are uh, they're doing on the border of Iraq right now with some allies of ours. Turkey is not a friend of the United States. They may be a part of that alliance, but they're not a friend of the United States. They will all get together with Russia and come against Israel. But I can't give you any more until the next time. How many learned something tonight? Uh, next time I'm going to talk about why the Russian alliance can't do it today. And uh, how many think that's all right? Was it all right? Be sure y'all share this. I, I wish I had more time, but we'll take more time next time. Uh, let me ask you this. Look at me. If I, and I will teach you soon that that invasion will happen right prior to the rapture or right after the rapture. And if that's true, how close is the Lord to come? And if that's true, let me ask you this question. If he would come tonight, are you ready? How many right now can raise your hand and say, I know I'm ready? I'm saved. Looks like everybody. Let me make sure. If there's somebody here tonight not saved, will you simply up your hand and say, I want to be ready for the Lord when he comes? I'm not saved. I want to be saved. Stand with me. God bless you tonight. I'm not, most everybody give their hands. I'm not going to give an invitation, but if you want to come to me afterward, I'll take the Bible and open it to you. But I want to pray. I want to pray for the sick. I want to pray for you. I hope you got some help. I, uh, I'm not trying to uh, just preach what's on the news today. But when the news is popping out of the Bible, I think you all ought to know. Okay? And that's what I'm trying to do. I hope, I hope I was enlightening to you. I sure don't know everything, but I, I have gleaned some things over the years. And I want to be a blessing to you. Let's pray. Father, uh, we love you. Thank you for your word. I'm excited about this little study. Uh, I can see it could go a ways and expand it. Now, you just, you lead me how you want to lead me on it. And, and uh, if you want me to open it wide open and just give the whole thing, I'll give all of it. Lord, if you want me to make it a short little thing, I'll do that. I just want to be obedient to you. But I do want to help my people. I, I know they're all looking. They're, they're watching the same thing I'm watching. And God, if we want to be in tune to the Word of God. And help me be even more clear about it uh, next time. And we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Good night.